Okay, looks like at least most of us made it. Um, the Pathway Suitor Center, I believe it's open today, but uh, I'm, I'll let you, probably let you know by the end of class exactly when the first day of operation is, but I saw people in there this morning just now, so I'm pretty sure it's open today. ECA 202. ECA is right across the street from the bookstore. So we're right at the entrance of the bookstore, directly north across the street is ECA, and you're going to go down to the west end of the hallway is uh, two, on the second floor, 202, and that's open really generous hours for you guys, okay? 7.30 to 6, Monday through Thursday, 7.30 to 2, Friday, and um, I've said this before, but your best source of help in this class is going to be me and Chris, okay? Chris will have his hours in here. My hours, to remind you, are Tuesdays and Thursdays, 11.30 to 1, okay? Same place, right down the hall, ECA 209, so it's the same hallway, okay? So, uh, myself, my office hours are available. The, the point of office hours is you don't have to make an appointment. You can just show up during that time to have questions about the class and get help, okay? That's what I'm there for, so you don't have to email me for an appointment. Um, you don't have to be shy or scared. I am just as nice, if not nicer, in office hours than I am in class, okay? So take advantage of that. Come and take advantage of that. And then if um, if you want more help than that or that those times aren't good, we've got this, this tutor center. This is definitely your, a close second in getting help, okay? Anything else on campus for getting math help will be a distant third because... We're doing our best in this tutor center to train all these tutors in this curriculum, which you're finding out very quickly may feel like a lot different than math classes you've had in the past. Okay? And so for tutors that aren't familiar with pathways, they're going to kind of struggle to help you maybe because it's unfamiliar to them. So um, take advantage of this great resource. Okay? Any questions about that? Time. I'm pretty sure it's open today, but I'll, hopefully by the end of class I'll let you know for sure exactly um, when it will start being open. Anybody have a question? Okay, and I'll keep reminding you about that. <clears throat> okay, so last time we left off um, <clears throat> with this example right here. So we'll pick it. We'll pick it up here. Okay, and we had this, uh, we were looking at this right here, and we had formed the equation of the line that goes through these two points based on constant rate of change. And uh, the equation of the line is the relationship so that given any x value, it, we can get the corresponding y value, right? Or, and remember, so x is some quantity, right? It's some real world quantity. And so knowing the value of the, the current value of uh, x, whatever that quantity is, It'll get us the corresponding current value of the other quantity y. Okay, so this is a useful thing, right? So um, we, we, we know that x and y will represent two real-world quantities that are changing together. And by having the equation of the line, given any value of x, we can very quickly get the corresponding value of y. So I'll just, we'll just uh, review this quickly. Uh, what do we do first? We first need to get the constant rate of change. And how do we get the constant rate of change? That's right. And that's... Delta y over delta x. And so change in y is going to be final y minus initial y. Change in x is going to be final x minus initial x. Right? You practice that. To get the change in a quantity, you do the final value of the quantity minus the initial. And I think this was 2.4. Is that right? So we'll just we'll skip the calculation. It should be familiar. Okay? And then we said, hey, look, we want any... If we want, say, just pick any arbitrary x, y point, and we want to write, so our goal is to write what is y given this x, okay? So we want to write what is y given that x, and then this could represent every point on the line, right? Every point on the line. So what do we do first? Find the change in x. 
And Jose, tell me what the change in x is. So let's let's. Uh, Okay. Okay, but we want to bring in this point x, y into it, so we got every point x, y. Very good. Isn't that the change in x starting at two point nine? So that's right. That right there, change in x from 2.9 to x will be x minus 2.9. And somebody else, take it over. Is it Ethan? Yeah. Take it over from there. So what do we do next? Um, you can find the uh, change in Okay. And we, yeah. Uh, 2.9, isn't it k uh, delta x? Right. We said if we've got constant rate of change, changes in y are a constant multiple of changes in x. Sorry, Chris. So 2.4 times. Minus Good. <coughs> okay. Cool. And then Robert, take over from there. So y equal. So now we're after this y right here. Right. So y would equal two point four. Okay. You want to do this part? Okay. So the change we want that we're going to take the change. And the change, and then plus the initial y. Which was five point one six. Good. So this new value of y is our starting value of y, plus how much y changed, and we just got that. How much y changed is our two point four mm -hmm. times x minus two point nine. Okay, and that got us the equation of the line. All right, so I want you to, to, for practice, let's repeat this. So now, now we have every, this gives us every x, y in the line. So if we were to, to think about <coughs> all the points on the line, there's a special point down here where we cross the y-axis, and we call it the y-intercept. Okay, so what I want you to do is repeat that process again, not to find any arbitrary point x and y, but to find this point. Okay, is there anything we know about that point right off the bat? What's that? The x is it the x zero or the y zero? X is zero, right? She was right. She was right. X is zero. So we've got 0 and what we call b, the y-intercept. So we're going to find this value of b, but use the same process again. Okay, So go through the same process. So rather than the final point being x, y, the final point is this point, 0, b. So practice and you can work together, share your work. But we'll work through this process again. But now the goal is not any point y, but this particular y, which is the y-intercept, or b. Okay, go for it. Oh, thank you very much. Did you see the, the grades? And What's that? Did you see the grades on Blackboard? I didn't see it. Did you get them up there? Yeah. 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 Okay. I just want to see if you made it. All right, so uh, we got the first year homework that was due Tuesday. We'll just pass it around. It's alphabetized by last name. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Alphabetized by last name. So you just find yours and pass on the stack. Okay. Okay. Find a partner. Talk it through together, okay? If you need to move your desk a little bit, that's great. I tried. Really? Sorry about that. Yeah, I tried. I tried for PSA, this building, and LSA. He said there was nothing available. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, at least you've tried. Yeah, I did. I did. See, Nassim, did you? How did this go? Yeah.
Okay, but I was I wanted you to practice this process again. Uh, yeah, that will work. That's that will work uh, for sure. But so what about practicing this process? What would we do first? Any of not sure. Tell me your name again. Patricia. Patricia. I'm not sure if I did it right. Okay. But I did delta, uh, delta y over delta x, and then I plugged in five point one six minus e over two point nine minus zero. Okay, so I'm I was encouraging you to, to repeat this process. To repeat this process. So that, yes, so um, that may work. Um, so, uh, what did you do again? And then, well, I plugged in y1, y2 minus y1, x2, um, x1, and then I plug in the points, and then it equals 2.4, and solve for b. Okay, so, all right, okay, good. So you went 2.4 equals, and you did what? 5.16 minus b? Yeah. And you solve for B. Yes. Okay, totally valid. See what she did? When she said she I know what the constant rate of change is, so I know my change in Y is 5.16 minus B, and my change in X is 2.9 minus 0. So I solved she solved for B. That totally works. That's great. Okay? Anybody do, do kind of rep, repeat this process? Tell me your name? Andy. Andy. Well, we already know the constant rate of change. Okay. So we don't have to do that again. And then uh, to find delta x, it's uh, 0 minus 2.9, which is the initial value of x. Okay. And we could just think of that as just this way, right? How far, what is delta x? It's uh, the distance from <laughs> 0 y to the initial value. Right. And from here to there, what is that change in x? 2.9? Negative 2.9. Right, which is what you said, 0 minus 2.9. Yeah. Cool, and then what? And then to find delta y, we took the initial rate of change, which is k, also known as 2.4, and we multiplied it by that negative 2.9 to get negative uh, 6.96. And then to find the... Did bottom, you say negative 6.96? Correct. Okay, so then there's a corresponding change in y of... Cool. All right. And then to find the final y, um, we just added in the initial y value of 5.16. Starting at 5.16, we're going to add the change, which was? I know, it makes me tired too. Okay, and what do we get? Negative uh, 1.8. And Patricia, is that what you got when you did it your way? No. Nope. <laughs> oh, we should have. We should get the same thing. So then, so we got algebra. You got to. Um, right, right? This is fine. You just got to solve correctly. You should yeah. get the exact same thing. Yeah. So somewhere your algebra went wrong when you solved this. Okay. Okay. I'm encouraging this because it really gets the feeling of look as x changes, then there's a corresponding change in y, and there's the, we're dealing with the mathematics behind that. As x changes. How does y change? Okay, so that's that's what we're really uh, focusing on. But there are other ways to do it, and and they're not incorrect. Okay, um, so now let's let's take this equation that we found, and let's we can simplify it. Look, we can multiply the two point four out and simplify, and let's see what we get. Okay, so if we take that, so we found that b was negative one point eight. <coughs> Yeah, question. I just got to ask a question. Who still needs this? Yeah, where's the... Who has not seen the stack of homework yet? Okay, thank you. All right, so um, we'll switch to black here. So if I were to solve this, I would get y equals 2.4x. What's 2 point... Someone got with a calculator. What's 2.4 times negative 2.9? What is it? 6.96. Okay, plus 5.516. And then if I, I can simplify that one step further, y equals 2.4x. And if we add negative 6.96 and 5.16, we get 
So look at that. So if we simplified our equation of our line, this is the familiar mx plus b, right? mx plus b, there's the value of b, which agrees with what we found, right? So there's that value of b, the y-intercept, agrees with, with our um, development of it. OK, questions on this process of finding the equation of a line, and now we're talking about finding the y-intercept. Anybody have a question? All right, so um, we're learning this. Maybe this you may have done lots of lines before, and we're teaching it this way again because it's, we're really thinking about how the quantities change together. You can have a change in x and change in y. So you will be responsible for this. If you've got your own methods and you can always rely on them, it's okay. But we're we're learning something new about this idea of covariation. How x change when x changes, how does y change with it? And we can use the mathematics behind that to to write the equation of the line, and you'll be responsible for that, okay? Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to uh, take this example here. So we've got the line. And what am I drawing right now? Good, right? When I draw that and you see that, so is there... Am I, am, I, am I creating a point right there if I do this? Am I creating a point? I'm creating a point right there. Really? You're identifying. I'm identifying or highlighting a point. It was already there, right? Because this is all this is is just a whole lot of points. And by doing that, I'm just saying, hey, I want to I wanna draw your attention to this point that was already there, right? It already existed. I'm drawing your attention to it. I'm highlighting it. Okay. So let's, let's put some uh, quantities to this. Let's say x is... Number of seconds since the camera started moving. Okay, and let's say y equals the distance to the right of the left hand basket in meters. Anybody know what I'm referring to? You guys have been to concerts and sporting events? And they've got wires, right? And what are on the wires? Cameras. And they can move, these cameras can move real quick and kind of do really cool shots that circle with people. And all right, so in a basketball game, sometimes they you know, imagine they have a camera on the side of the court. And so X is the number of seconds since the camera started moving, and Y is the distance to the right. So if you're looking on the side of the court, you have the basket on the left, the basket on the right. So it's the distance in meters to the right of the left-hand basket. Do these quantities, are these well-defined variables for these quantities? Okay. What about the fact that at time equals zero, we found that that distance quantity was what? Negative 1.8. Does it make sense? How far? Yeah, it's good. So if this just if, if it's distance to the right, then a negative value would mean that far to the left of the and that makes perfect sense. So at time equals zero, we started 1.8 to the left. And uh, time started and this and this cam how did the camera move? Did it move to the right or did it move to the left? And how did it move to the right? At a constant rate, right? Did it, it moved at a constant rate, and then we know that because we have a linear function. At what constant rate did the 2.4? And so isn't that the speed of the camera? That's the speed, right? And so you might have remembered a formula for speed. What's the formula for speed? Distance over time. Is that right? Or in this case, in terms of y and x, what would it be? y over x. Okay, so let's check that out. Here's an x and a y, and here's an x and a y. So I want you to find y over x for both of those points. Find y over x. 
And we'll check our formula for speed here. How about this first one? As soon as, soon as you get it, shout it out. Anybody got it? 2.12? 2.4? Point, it's 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 2.4? 
you would have to travel to cover that distance at a constant speed. Okay, so what's the 10.44? That's his constant speed. That's average. That's his constant speed. That's his average speed. That's his average speed. So what about this idea that he, he went 10.44 meters every second? Is that true? No. What about in the first second? Did he go 10.44 meters? It was a different speed, but like uh, all together was the average speed, but the beginning and the ending and the middle was all different speeds. Okay. In the first second, did he go further or, or shorter than 10.44 meters? Shorter. He went a shorter distance, right? Because he started from rest. So, so in that first second, he didn't go 10.44 meters. He went less. Okay. So 10.44 meters per second. So it, it, that number means going 10.44 meters every second, but he didn't go 10.44 meters every second, right? So some of you are saying average. So what does that mean, the average? If that's his average speed, what does that mean? If you went plus or minus 10.44 seconds at any given time. Plus, plus or minus. Sometimes he was faster than that, sometimes he was slower than that. You can say that was like the peak. That was the peak speed? Yeah. That was the peak speed. Peter? Is that if you were to go constant speed, that's the speed you would go? So, it's, it's, so if I'm starting to reset, it's, it's going to go constant speed, that's the speed you have to go to cover that. But that's not an accurate. If he were going at constant speed, that was the constant speed he would have had to go. Okay. Well, now we're getting on the right track there. So I recreated his race here. Wow. So here's the this is like the timer. This is like seconds, okay? It's a little fast. Let me slow it. What's that? Did you cut him out yourself? Uh, I got it. Off the internet. I did not cut cut it out. It was just it was like that. Let's try this. Maybe this is better. This is more. This just feel like seconds here. Yeah, it's pretty good. But so this this um, kind of reproduces his race. Okay, and there he is crossing at ten point five eight. Nine, sorry, nine point. Thank you. Nine point five eight. Okay, so here we go. Ready? Three, two, one, go. So he, like we said, he goes slower at first, and then he actually in the middle of the race he's going faster than ten point four meters per second, and then actually at the very very end he slows down just a little bit. The very end he slows down a little bit. So how many speeds is he going throughout the race? An infinite number of speeds, right? Because he's, he's going all the way from at rest up to something faster than 10.44 meters per second. There's, there's an infinite number of speeds that he's covering as he goes. But when we do change in distance over change in time, how many speeds do we get? One number. So we will really understand if he's going all these different speeds along the way and we calculate it and get one number, what does that number mean? What does that number mean? So it, we added up all the speeds and divided by the number of speeds? Yeah. Is it like averaging test scores? No, so it's, so it's not an average like that. Okay. So what does that number 10.44 mean? Like the other person said. Okay, the say it again. The constant time, if you were to, if we were just running at a constant speed from beginning to end, okay. that's what it would be. Okay. All right, so check this out. So I never showed you a picture of my daughter, did I? <laughs> I have a daughter. Yeah, she's a runner. There she goes. Emma. Go, Emma. Okay, so why did I add Emma into the, into the picture here? So look at and watch Emma. All right, so talk to the person next to you. So <laughs> what does Emma have to do with this? What does Emma have to do with this? Talk to the person next to you.
Okay, so answer these questions. Go. Answer, talk talk these questions out, okay? Talk these questions out. Oh, we have to answer them? Yeah, just to each other, yeah. All right, so hopefully you're getting the gist of this. So who can? Who can finish the statement? Ten point four four meters. So so okay. So ten point four four meters per second. That's that's Usain's average speed, right? That's Usain's average speed. So explain that. So who can finish the sentence? Ten point four four meters per second is. If it's his average speed, then what is it? <laughs> is it his speed? Is that 10.44 his speed? It's both of theirs because they both go the same distance in the same amount of time. Okay, that's, that's a crucial element of it. So, But what is 10.4 per meter second? Because it's not Usain's speed. Changing. It's not the same speed. Range of change of meters per second. Constant rate of change of the speed. What's that? Constant rate of change of the speed. Okay, so is it 10.44 meters per second? That's a constant speed, isn't it? Yeah. All right, represented by who? Emma. Emma is showing us you the constant speed that achieves what? Yeah. Emma is showing us a, a constant speed that you uh, that Bolt would have to go to. Uh, finish the race. Okay. So, Peter, you said it pretty well earlier. Yeah, it's the speed, the the speed that Usain Bolt would have to go. That would be constant speed. That's the speed that would have to go to the race in the same amount of time. Right, to, to cover the same distance in the same amount of time. So, 10.4 per meter second is the constant speed. It's like a different runner running at a constant speed. The constant speed. That would achieve what? The same results. Right, but we want the same result. Be more specific. Cover the same distance in the same amount of time. Average speed is the constant speed needed to cover the same distance in the same amount of time. So you have to imagine another runner that's running at a constant speed. Because, yeah, there's maybe there's a moment or two where he's running 10.44 meters per second. But most of the time, he's not, right? Most of the time, he's not. So we have to introduce another runner running at a constant speed such that the distance covered is the same in the same amount of time. Okay, so notice, this, is, this should feel worlds different than adding up a bunch of test scores and dividing by the number of tests, right? So we're not, so we're not ad adding up s several speeds and dividing by the number of speeds, okay? Instead, we're thinking of it as, as a constant speed that achieves the same result, covering the same distance in the <coughs> same amount of time. Okay, so what I want you to do is look on page, on your book, page 44, Number nine.
So now in number nine, on page 44, they give you a formula. And uh, you're going to calculate average speed with the formula. Okay, so this is a little bit different. Take 44, number nine. Take a couple minutes to work on that. Everyone got the homework stack? Everyone get your homework back? Who's? Homework back? Yeah, did you come? Uh, yeah. I sent a couple emails out. You must not have gotten them. Yeah, I know. It's, I, I... <laughs>
Okay, let's talk about this situation. So the first question for you is, look at how they, um, in the setup of the question, they define the variables, D and T. how they do? how they do? Uh, um, remember we talked about uh, we want to define variables well? How do they do with uh, meeting the criteria for defining variables? So start with D. What do they call D? Or how do they in the sentence? Distance, <laughs> distance in feet from a car from the intersection. How about that? How do they do? Good. It's good. They were specific. They use the units. It's a quantity. How about T? Except that the car is the intersection. Is that it? It's just after T seconds. It says after T seconds. How about that? So we can infer that it's a time. We got the units, but is it specific? No, they didn't do really very well there with T. So we're going to do better. So um, we got it. So. If I was going to graph this, which would be distance and which would be time? So let's start with x. Is x uh, the time quantity or the distance quantity? Time. Conventionally, conventionally. Yeah, so conventionally we put time on the, as the independent quantity, and then we look at how distance changes, the, y, the vertical quantity, with respect to time. Okay, so let's do a better job defining x. So x, uh, let's say time in seconds. What time in seconds is it? Since the car passed the intersection. Since the car passed the intersection. So that would mean that at t equals zero, what should d be? If it's time in seconds since the car left the intersection. If time was zero, then d should be what? Zero. Is that true? No. no. What's what's what is the distance when time equals zero? Three. Yeah. Three. Three. Okay. So so we need to do better than that. So or different than that. Okay, so time in seconds, it's really not a time in seconds since left leaving the intersection. What is it? It's time in seconds since what? Okay, so we could say since since being th three feet away. Or we could just say since starting the clock, since starting a stopwatch. And we know that when, we, when do we start the stopwatch? When the car is? Three seconds. So since starting, watch. When, when did you get this three feet away from? Okay. Well, what what is the value of d when time equals zero? What is the value of d when time equals zero? Three. Do you see that it's three? That's where we got it. Yeah. So we're going to say that when the car is three feet away from the intersection, we're going to start the clock and time equals zero. All right. How about so? And why we say is the a distance in, is it feet? Yeah. From the intersection. Okay, so time in seconds and starting the watch, distance in feet from the intersection. Okay, so, uh, so the, uh, we've done a little bit of with um, two-dimensional graphs before. The beauty of a two-dimensional graph is we can, as one quantity changes, so which quantity am I showing changing here? Time or distance? Time. Yeah, so we think about, so time can take on all these different quantities of seconds, right? And so then as the time changes, what happens? Distance increases. Distance increases, right? Distance increases. So starting at time equals zero, notice what is the distance of the car in the intersection? It's not zero, it's three, and that's, that's showing that right there. And as time increases, that quantity of distance from the intersection likewise increases. And so say right here at time equals three seconds, how can we rep represent, maybe, yes, oh, it's very touchy. Can I get it? Yeah, they, I have requested them to do that. To, yeah, requested them to change that. There we go. Okay, so how can we represent what's going on here? At, at time equals three, 
The distance is about something close to 20 feet from the intersection. How can we represent that? What is our representation of this moment in time and the corresponding distance from the intersection? Point. Point, right? Okay, so that point represents these two simultaneous values of these two quantities. The simultaneous value of these two quantities. That when time equals 3, distance equals 20. And so then when time increases, we get a new time and a new distance and a new point, right? So for every time and distance taken together, we get a point on the graph. And so then all such points make the graph, right? All such points make the graph of this relationship of the distance and time changing together. Okay, so you had a task there. Was it, um, they said, find the, what did they ask me for? The average rate of change. Average rate of change, average speed. From when t was equal to 3 and t was equal to 7. Okay, and so what is delta t? Delta t is 4. And what was our formula for distance? Nice and loud, someone. 145 t squared plus t plus 3. Plus three. Great. OK. So we've got the change in t4. And we're going to plug it into the d formula to get the corresponding change in distance. So if I put 4 into this, it's going to give me the change in distance for a change in time of 4, right? Does that work? No. Tell me, what's your name again? Martin. Martin. Because um, the formula is to put in the time at a specific point, and uh, that's the change in time, so it's not going to work. Exactly. What is this formula expecting? When you put a number into this formula, what does it think that number means? A specific point in time. Yeah, some time, time since, <coughs> a, a moment in time since we started the watch. So if we put d equals 4 into that, what are we finding? That distance at 4 seconds, right? We're finding this one I don't think has, there is no 4.0. Yeah, there is no 4.0. Okay, so it's finding this distance, right? So it's finding exactly what that distance is. It's not finding the change in distance. This is a common mistake that students make. I think by putting a change in into this formula, you'll get a change in distance out. Okay? So because we know that the average speed is change in distance over change in time. So if putting 4 in doesn't get us the change in distance, what will? Two different times. Which two times do you want to put in? So when you're going to put in t equals 3. And what do you get for the distance? Is that what you got? Yep. And then you wanted to? Keep going. Put in 7. T equals 7. Which gives you 83.5. And then you subtract uh, 19.5 from 83.5 to find the uh, change in x. I'm sorry, the, uh, the change in x. Okay, so our change in y or change in d, 83.5 or 18.5, change in time. That's our 4, or you could write 7 minus 3, or we know it's 4, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> What'd you get? Uh, 64. Oh, I'm sorry, 16 is the time. 16, what's the units? Uh, feet per second. Okay, so now I want you to take turns doing a good job of explaining what exactly that number means, okay? So, so find a partner, explain in <coughs> very clear words, what does the number 16 mean? Go, there should be lots of conversations. Um, 
What was the change in time? I can't. Four. Four. Put it in words right now. Wouldn't it be the curve line? All right, let's see. Pretty good. What was our change in? Let me do X. What was our change in distance? Sixty-four feet. So who can give me a good explanation of the number sixteen? Sixteen feet per second is how fast the car went between three and seven seconds. Is that right? That's how fast the car went between three and seven seconds. No, that's not true. How many speeds did it go? Many speeds, because it's speeding up. Okay, so it's not the speed that it went between three and seven seconds. You want to give it a shot? Uh, What's that? Um, this is the at t equals three seconds. This is the distance traveled. We use the formula to get it. And then at t equals 7 seconds, this is the distance, 83.5 is the distance travel using the formula. You see? Because that's what this formula does. Given a point in time, it gives you the corresponding distance from the intersection. Okay, who wants to tell me what that number 16 means? Robert? It's the constant speed between 4, or I'm sorry, 3 and 7. So it wouldn't be a curved line like that. It'd be a straight, like a linear. Okay, but which constant speed is it? Which constant speed? It's the, uh, <laughs> the constant same, speed same distance and the same amount. Right. So we have this actual car, right? This actual car. It started somewhere at three seconds and ended up somewhere else at seven seconds. That's sixteen feet per second is first and foremost, it is a the constant speed. So it's like a different car, right? It's like a different car, and what did that different car do? Travel the same amount of distance and the same amount of Traveling the same amount of distance, 64 feet, in the same amount of time, 4. And, Robert, how did you want to represent that on the graph? It's a straight line, not a curved line. Okay, so let's see if I, got, how, if I can do this straight. Let's see if I can do it. Let's see if I can do it here. Let's see if I can do it. Uh, I did it. So, that, so this black line, then, represents the constant speed of 16 feet per second that achieves the same distance covered in those three seconds as the actual car. It's like a different car that's just cruising, right? They start at the same place in three seconds, they end at the same place in three seconds. All right, now I want you to find the uh, average speed in the first four seconds. Go, find the average speed in the first four seconds since we started the watch. Go. And compare with the person next to you once you get it. The average speed of the first four seconds, over the first four seconds since we started the watch.
Yeah, compare with the, compare with somebody next to you. See if you got it. I want the average speed of our actual car here in the first four seconds since starting the time stopwatch. So you said the average speed, right? The average speed over the first four seconds. Okay, James, did you get it? Seven? And how'd you get seven? Okay, so did you find the distance traveled at t equals zero, or the speed at t equals zero? What is three? Three feet per second at t equals zero. Is that right? Three feet per second at t equals zero. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the distance. That, that's not the speed. At t equals zero, the distance from the intersection is three. And at t equals four, tell me your name in the orange there. How did it go? And so how did you find the average speed? I took the distance of t equals four and then the distance of t equals zero, subtracted them and divided by the change in time, which is four. So you took 31 minus three, which is 28, and divided by four. Yeah. Uh, I need a question about that. Shouldn't we like divide it by four seconds and subtract whatever value, uh, three times that value then, since we start at three seconds. So meaning from zero to three, you're not doing anything, if I'm not correct. No, you're not thinking about it right. So at time equals zero, the car is three second, three feet from the intersection and moving away. And then at time equals four, it's 31 feet away. <coughs> so the change in distance was 28, change in time is four. And you get seven feet per second. What's the change in time change in time? Four again, right? So look, between those two those two exercises we did, the change in time was four. And what what was the <coughs> thing about constant rate of change? With equal changes in the first quantity. If we have equal changes in the first quantity, and we have constant rate of change, then we have what? Consistent, Consistent changes in the other quantities. This is one of this is for your quiz, right? The reason you're writing that out for your quiz is so you remember it and forget it and then I'll apply it. So equal changes in the first quantity mean consistent changes in the other. How about here? So here we had a change of time of four and we got a change of distance of 28, right? And here we got a change of time of four and then we got a change of distance of 64. Conclusion? They're not constant. Be more specific. That, the rate at which they change is not constant, is it? We don't have constant rate of change. We don't have constant rate of change because for this equal changes in our first quantity, we're getting different changes in the other quantity. And then how does that show up in the graph? The fact that the it's curved, it's curved right? It's curved. So because it's curved. We're not, we don't have this consistent change in our distance quantity. We have a changing change in the distance quantity, and therefore the points become a curve. Okay, cool. Top hat. Get your internet out. Any questions on this example? Yes, it is. Log in.
Okay, so the questions are up. I'm going to show you. I thought I was. No. Oh, I had this already. Let's see here. PowerPoint too. Okay, so all the questions refer to what you're seeing here. We got John up top, and we got Jane down below. And you've got the time elapsed since they both started walking, and then their distance, corresponding distance since they started walking. Okay, so I'm just going to play this over and over again, and you get to answer the questions. Is there six questions or five? Five, five um, questions. There's no way to know whether or not John is not that. Okay, all the questions. Well, maybe that's one of the choices. <laughs> all the questions have a best answer. Try refreshing. Anyone having who's having difficulty? So try just try refreshing the page, maybe closing your browser and reopening. Okay, so the visual is intended to show something in general, don't get too nitpicky, okay? It's intended to show something in general. So go with the spirit of it. Go with the spirit of it, okay? Don't don't get too nitpicky or technical. 